Thank you, Nivruti, for the warm introduction. I would like to thank Fiki for extending me this invitation, and I'm very much honored to be presenting in this forum. In 2011, Mark Andreessen famously said, software is eating the world. With that statement, he was implying the impact software is having in our daily lives. Decades earlier, another man and his company created a pipeline that resulted in us being able to feed this huge appetite for software that is now eating the world. FC Kohli and TCS trained millions of engineers coming out of universities on this new discipline that wasn't yet taught in universities called software engineering. TCS under Mr. Kohli pioneered methodologies to take large-scale software problems, break them down to smaller chunks, and execute them successfully with a large globally distributed workforce. Mr. Kohli and TCS were an inspiration for many software entrepreneurs that eventually built an impressive $200 billion IT industry in India. His inspiration will be with us as we look forward to the next era in computing. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a few things that I'm passionate about. Democratization of compute, the era of distributed intelligence, and the role India can play in this era. Having been brought up in India, I share a strong emotional bond and rooting for India's continued success in technology. I'm an architect and engineer at heart, which means I like to step back and look at the big picture. So please permit me to do that today. The clock is ticking. A new frontier of computing is coming, one that will change the paradigms of computing and will need bold investments by all. India, too, needs a strategic view of how the nation can not only thrive in the future, but lead on a global stage. To do this, you must build that vision and make bold investments now. So why is everyone so excited about AI and keep talking about how it is the next thing and it will change the world, etc., etc.? I'll try and explain in my simple words how I think about AI. For many, many years, we as people observed things all around us and experimented with them. We call these observations data. We analyzed this data and generated insights, insights that led to new technologies that enriched our lives one way or another. These new technologies also helped us generate more data more efficiently that we analyzed again and therefore generated more insights that benefited us even more. This relentless iterative loop has led to many amazing advances for humanity, from inventing the wheel to space travel. As many have noted, this iterative technology loop accelerated tremendously in the last 50 years since the invention of computers and this little phenomenon called Moore's Law. AI technology, in my simple words, is technology that is dramatically accelerating this iterative loop. We are now seeing this loop coming down from what used to take many years to days. And eventually, we will see this loop come down to milliseconds. So what is the reason behind this dramatic acceleration? And why do we expect to see more changes in this coming decade than the last four put together? The key words are computational democratization. When we made a lot of computation available to a lot of people, major disruptions happened. First, the PC era. We started with kiloscale computing in 80s and 90s for everyone. And today, you have terascale computing even in a small, thin and light laptop. This era helped us digitize all information that we had access to and also network all the computers we could. Eventually, we got one billion people connected to the internet. This era changed the way we work, learn, and entertain ourselves. Then came the mobile era and cloud era, where we had over 10 billion connected devices. The computational access in this era scaled from megascale to petascale. This era changed the way we live. Moore's law 
played a key role in enabling these disruptions, making computing exponentially faster, cheaper, and smaller, relentlessly every 18 to 24 months. Let's take a look at these errors in the context of India now. Digitization of India started a little late, but India now leads with 700 million smartphone users. India today has the highest per user 4G data consumption in the world, and that too at the lowest cost per bit. India definitely has taken leadership position in democratizing connectivity. When we look at cloud infrastructure compute, India still has a way to go before it catches up with leading countries. For example, for every server installed in India in 2020, the United States will deploy 24 and China 17. India's current cloud computing capacity is simply not enough to meet the needs of 1 billion people. But I think there is a way for India to lead as we enter this next era. So what's the next era? We call it the distributed intelligence era, where we will see over 100 billion distributed, connected, and intelligent devices that will enrich our lives in more ways than we can imagine. I believe India can leapfrog to this era. This era is an exciting challenge for technology, and I'm optimistic that we can overcome this challenge. Why is it challenging? It is because intelligence is not cheap. It is very expensive. Let's take a look at the computational complexity of some of the popular AI neural networks of today. I know these are a lot of numbers, but I would like to draw attention to two things. First, computational demands of some of the newer AI networks are doubling every three to four months. This is faster than the exponential rate of Moore's law, which helped us in the last two eras. The second thing is, it takes a whole day to train one of these networks with a petaflop computer. Now, a petaflop is 10 to the power of 15. This seems like a large number, but very soon in 2021, you'll see this level of compute fit in the palm of your hand. This is our XEHP chip architecture that we are sampling to customers today. In fact, large portions of this chip were designed and developed at our design center in Bangalore. The next challenge is to learn at an even faster rate, from one day down to a few seconds. That's a thousand X increase we need over petascale. That's exascale. Exascale is big, but it is within reach in 2021. You can take 1,000 of these petascale chips and build an exascale system from them. You'll see few of these exascale systems deployed in 2021 across the world. But the ultimate goal is to learn in real time, like in milliseconds. That's another 1,000x increase over exascale. That's zeta scale. That may seem like an insane amount of compute, but this is where the distributed connectivity with low latency, high-speed optical networks comes into play. A thousand exascale computers distributed and connected with low latency, high-speed optical networks. That gets you zeta scale. We need this 1,000x increase in compute, not only in the big mega data centers, but also at the sensors, edge, and throughout the network. Recently, we made a call for the whole industry to work together across what we call six pillars to deliver this 1,000x increase of AI compute by 2025. The reason why we need compute advances from sensors to the data centers is because it is not practical, safe, or efficient to move all the data from sensors to the cloud all the time. We are generating data at a faster rate than our ability to analyze and transmit it in real time across the whole network. This data generation is stressing the whole network to need more capacity and bandwidth at every level of memory and network hierarchy. How about we reduce the need to move so much data? We won't need to move a ton of data 
if we move the compute near the data. This leads us to our edgy anecdote. What happens at the edge stays at the edge. Taking inspiration from the famous quote, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You just take the fun memories back, not the details. Same with data. Much of the data turning into insights should happen at the edge. This is a massive compression opportunity and also helps protect your data. You keep your data close to you and share the insights you choose to share to help enrich the lives of others. A 1,000x increase in compute performance seems like a daunting number, particularly given the recent commentary around the slowdown of Moore's law. To get to 1,000x by 2025, our entire industry will need to work together across all the key technology pillars. Let me walk you through how. First pillar is process technology and packaging. We expect the combination of transistor and wire density scaling, along with new packaging technologies, to deliver a 4x improvement for AI compute by 2025. Second pillar is memory. Many innovations are in the pipeline as AI is very memory intensive. Higher density memories with much higher bandwidth and efficiency, leveraging advanced packaging will deliver 4X or more AI performance. Third pillar is compute architecture itself. We see a major transformation for the whole industry moving from CPU to XPU architectures. Compelling optimizations with 4x or more performance for AI workloads are realized when we productively combine CPU, GPU, and FPGA-style computations into XPU architectures. Fourth pillar is interconnects. These are the networking technologies that can connect chips from the ranges of few microns to several hundred miles. 4x improvements enabled by advancement in packaging, silicon photonics, high-speed SERDIs, and network software architecture are well in sight by 2025. Again, 4x improvement over five years is less than the traditional Moore's Law gain. These vectors deliver a cumulative 256 times improvement from the hardware pillars. We also expect a minimum of 4x improvement in performance from software efficiency. If you were to ask most experts, they will tell you that there is in fact a lot more room for improvement in software efficiency, what some have called room at the top of the computing stack, and they demonstrate over 1,000x improvement in software alone for certain AI algorithms. Without even needing to rely on the four hardware pillars, I got you all excited about. And this is where India, home to over 6 million software developers, has an inherent advantage to enter the distributed intelligence era sooner than later. The gains across these five pillars are multiplicative for many AI workloads. So we can realize four to the power of five equals 1024x improvement. This seemed like a huge unachievable number at first, but when we broke it down across these five vectors, it seems much more solvable. I want to take all of what you heard today and map it back to an India that I want us all to dream about. A zeta scale distributed connected compute available with equal access to everyone across the whole country. I would like to dream that this is the India of 2025. A zeta scale India. Now, let us look at zeta scale again. It's a large number with 21 zeros next to the one. These large numbers may seem quite daunting for us in the modern world, but mathematicians in ancient India comprehended larger numbers than this a long time ago. In fact, Sanskrit is the only language where I could find individual names for each of the powers of 10 up to infinity and beyond. In preparing for this talk, I was delighted to find what zeta scale is in Sanskrit, and was also inspired to target the next scale of numbers. I'm sure there is a reason these large numbers have names. We just need to get there to find out why. I want to sign off my talk with this self-reliant computational 
vision for India. Koti Pakoti Gananaka Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Thank you, everyone.